I, I will tell you, um, if you were here last year, I would tell you uh, we, we take cash uh, from foreign investors and we have no financing to offer. And, and, but we are finding avenues now slowly and the best product that we have to offer, and this has actually changed from when you were here in October. You don't even know this, uh, Scott. Um, Exciting. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, we, we don't have the information. So, I mean, on the game show or... <laughs> just, just quickly before Hewlett does this, there, is a, there are people in South Africa running around, you know, buying houses at $30,000, selling them to you at $70,000 and asking for a 50% deposit and giving you financing at 8.2%. You, know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out how they're doing it. So you've got to be extremely, basically we all know there's no bank financing, but you've got to be extremely careful to get into the detail of the financing, who's doing the financing, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to kind of give that as a preface. And when we're in Atlanta, this is my interest, I'm going to take you to go and look at one of those beautiful houses that proud South Africans are investing their money in. But it's, just, it's very important just to understand the difference. Well, we, we have a program for our international investors that... Um, you would pay 50% down, but the program actually, probably the best number to use, and Clinton, I think, did you use 55%? Yeah, 55. Okay, they will finance, it really averages around 55 to 60% of the purchase price, which means you're gonna have to put down 40 to 45%. But the best way to calculate your numbers is uh, 50%. So they'll finance 50%, but it's actually gonna come out to be around 55 to 60. Uh, percent, but I would put down 50. So they're going to finance 50 percent, and you're going to put 50 percent cash. The loan, uh, they're going to have a fee of four percent loan fee. So if you have, if you bought a house for eighty thousand, and they finance forty thousand, uh, you would have a one thousand six hundred dollar loan fee. The good thing about that, while it does seem high, is there's no appraisal, there's no underwriting fee, there's no processing fee, there's no origination fee, and here in the United States, if you go to a bank like Wells Fargo to get a traditional mortgage loan, I mean, they hit you with every fee known to mankind, and, but here it's just a flat 4% loan fee. And the terms, there's one or two things that you can do today uh, with this program. The best is 7.9% uh, um, and is fixed for three years. On, and the payments are calculated at, uh, on a 20-year amortization. Um, and it can be renewed. Uh, and they would charge a 1% fee at the end of three years to renew it. Now, they also have 9.9% um, fixed at five years. And Scott, that's what we had when you were here in October. And it's the same thing. It is, um, is that, it, am I right on that? Or was it three uh, years? Exactly three years. It's three years too? Mm -hmm. Oh. I thought it was five years. No, they're trying to get the seven point okay. nine. All right, all right. So forget that. So they lower the rate. This is the same company, seven point nine percent at three years, and they are hoping, and almost even hate to say this, but they are anticipating being able to fix this into seven years. And we just actually talked to the guy. This is a company out of Dallas, Texas, that has the fund for this, and. Um, and he said, you know, he's telling us that uh, if they are able to lock it into seven years, they will renew everybody's note for a flat $125 fee to redo the note and lock the rate in for seven years versus the three years. But right now, this is the best product that we have. You know, are there others? Yeah, I can show you. Uh, uh, there's a local guy here, they'll do a 50-50, but there's a 5% loan fee, it's 12%, and it's a five-year fully amortized loan. Uh, so you have a very high payment, a uh, very high rate, and uh, he'll, he'll make all those. Uh, uh, so in five years, you know, but you'd be better off uh, this um, loan here, 
I mean, you, that's your minimum payment is on a 20 year amortization. Obviously, you can add principal to it if you wish. So. Two things, Hewlett. Um, you explained last time that this company out of, uh, would you say, Houston, Tex Texas? Yes. The private equity fund. They're only lending to um, specific companies. Yes. Because you mind going into more detail on that? Because that, that for me was, you know, it's, it's not just Joe Soap down the street. It's only specific companies. And you guys at Marathon had to qualify because of what well, you tell me. Yeah, we, um, we were approached by these gentlemen uh, back in June. Uh, they flew to Memphis uh, and they really scrutinized our operation. They wanted to see. Um, you know, meet our team. Uh, they wanted to inspect our, our property management division. We actually got them out in the field. We, we did exactly with them what we're going to do tomorrow with you. They want to see the quality of the houses that we represent. Um, I had to submit my personal financials to them. And, uh, and we are one of only four companies in the United States that they approve. Uh, because we are also taking anyone that uses their program, we are, uh, obviously you have to give us authorization uh, as your management company, but we, we will deduct your monthly uh, payment out of your marathon account and, you know, uh, pay that on your behalf. So, um, and, you know, they very critical about taxes and insurance so, uh, our investors here in the U.S. We really put that burden on them. It's a little bit different when you're here in the United States, but uh, as an international owner, we will, uh, at your instructions, we will pay your taxes and insurance as well. Um, so, you know, that's what we're here for, to manage your property in your absence. So, uh, the, that's, that's what Scott is referring to. So, we, we are approved. We're talking to them almost on a daily basis, and uh, they continue also, you know, like I said, that was 9.9% .9 when Scott was here in uh, October. And we did probably a couple million dollars, uh, you know, to investors uh, uh, during that time. And we just got this lower two weeks ago. You know, a quick one though. So I think mean, one of the biggest lessons I learned from the financial crisis is those people that focus on income, not only survive but thrive, and those that focus on capital growth take a hiding. Now, yes. from my perspective, what I found very interesting, and I know everyone else that was here in October found very interesting, is that the reason that they're lending to your company as in one of the four companies is because of the they were happy that you could basically secure the income. And you know, we're like in South Africa if I buy a house, the bank's effectively lending against Scott Pickin and my income potential, not the income on the property. Right. And in, even in London when I bought it was called asset based lending. They were actually lending against the asset yes. and the right. value of the asset. What I found very interesting, and tell me if I got this wrong, but from what I understood, it's basically income-based lending, but based on the income of the property. That's right. Um, and the loan to value is calculated on 44 months rent. There you go. And, so, and, and that's why, I did, that is, you, boy, you have a great number. <laughs> but, uh, and that's why this sort of varies, and I think the worst we saw was like 50%, and that's probably going to be like on an A house, and then probably on a C house, you're probably going to be more at being able to get 60%. I think we've probably seen some higher than that. Yeah, 63 is the highest. And it, it's not exactly 44 times the monthly rent. They will end up to 44 times the monthly rent. Okay, perfect. But I mean, the point is, you know, they, they're looking at it that if you were to default, they actually, they've got security in the income, which to be fair is, I think, why we're all sitting around this table. That, right. they, well, they, they don't in terms of the income is what's, what's they don't, critical to it. They don't care what the house appraises for. It's a non-recourse loan, which means, uh, you know, in the event of a default, they're not coming after you. So they have no recourse against you. Uh, and your LLC, if you have an LLC here in the U.S., can sign, uh, you know, uh, you would be signing putting the loan in your LLC. Tricky question mm -hmm. um, that I have been asked by a number of our investors, um, and I don't really know the answer, and I don't know if you do the answer that I'm putting you on the spot here, but they basically said to me, okay, well, you've got this private equity fund that's lending the money and you collecting the rent, so if you didn't collect the rent, then, then they can default on the house and get the house back. You know, and so technically it's in your interest not to collect the rent because then they'll lose their house. And I, like I kind of, I mean I understand where someone's coming from with regards to the logic, other than the fact that I've met you guys and I know that your intention is not to not collect the rent, but you know what I mean? Like, well, what, what is the kind of the logic behind that just in terms of the incentivization? Well, in, in the, first of all, they, they're like any other lender. They don't want the house back. Uh, cause I, and that's why they came and scrutinized our company. They wanted to you know, 
see the stability and our operation. Um, and, and, you know, quite honestly, I told them, hey, if you have anybody to fall, I want to be the first one in line to be able to buy this house at that price. But um, in the event, Scott, that, uh, you know, an investor had one house with us and they, they had a loan, and a year from now, the tenant defaults, they move out, whatever, there's no, there's no rent coming in now. Well, that's why we have that contribution, and it would be up to the owner uh, to put a contribution knowing that their payment is coming due. And, uh, and so there, you know, it, it would definitely be the owners um, at fault if they were to default. I mean, we would, you know, they, they would have to be in hiding somewhere because, uh, you know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then if I am, so say for example, I see a property tomorrow that I like. Mm -hmm. You know, again, in South Africa at the moment, they want to know what my Maltese Poodle's cousin's name is, you know, before they give me financing. You know, seriously, it's all your balance sheets, your assets, your balance sheets, yeah. everything basically. Same, uh, same in the United States. So, so what, what are we basically, what are we having to provide to, to buy the house? You know, this, I see this house tomorrow, I want to buy it. Right, what is the process from the financing side? Good. Uh, <laughs> they do have a pretty detailed loan application, but it is a non-recourse loan, so you don't have to give them as much detail as what you're referring to. And I can, I can send you exactly what they want to see. Yeah. Uh, one thing that is odd that they require is that you have an LLC that is specifically for properties that, that um, they have financed. So if you own other properties in the United States, they don't want you to have that those properties in that LLC so that they're not tangled up with uh, with the CFAM properties. Okay, so it's just, Could you uh, is the name of the lender? Yeah. Uh, C what's that? Uh, C F A M. Yeah, I'm sure it's an acronym for something. Yeah. <laughs> CFAM. Just quickly, um, so you guys have a different LLC. Is there any chance you could print those applications for us tomorrow? Um. Yeah. Even if it's just, even if it's just, I, I can definitely. Yeah, we'll, I think we'll it'd be fantastic. Agree. Report. I don't know if you guys agree, but I'd love to, yeah. uh, to see yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Sorry, did I understand correctly? Say, so for the CFAM properties, you have to set up a separate LLC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Well, yeah, they told us that. Uh, Rick is our contact there, and I, I don't see how you know they can they really can police that. Yeah, I mean, if you if you bought a property in New York when you were here, or you buy two in Atlanta and one in Orlando, I mean, you can use the same US LLC. I mean, if you set up in Nevada or Wyoming, wherever, and I mean, that's on their wish list, but I can assure you, I don't know how they would, I don't know how they would, I, thought, I told Rick that was a stupid requirement, so, yeah, anyhow. Um, sorry, just to go back on the point that Scott mentioned earlier, um, because, yeah, so, what, so I appreciate that it's the owner's responsibility to contribute to um, any monies not received during, you know, or, or any contribution for that for that loan, for example, uh, during vacancy perhaps. But um, what Scott said is, what is the incentive? Because it, you know, from a client, I'm working with Scott on talking about this opportunity. So um, someone would actually say, okay, well then why, why won't you, you know, what's your incentive in making sure the rent's collected? Um, I can make up answers, but I don't want to. I want to know from your perspective, you know. Um, does that um, make sense? I, I, I think I got it. Okay. Um, you're, you're wondering what is, what, what, what is the incentive of this lender not to take the house back? No, no. Um, because what Scott said was, um, you know, having a skeptical client is saying, well, then what stops Marathon not collecting the rent or whatever the case is? So that the house can be defaulted because you then right, say right. They, they, they don't yeah. want to they take the house back. No, no, I know they that. They inspire the managing agent, which is them. You go yeah, the no, I, so yeah. You I know that answer, business. but I, I want to know what their perspective is. Do you understand what I'm saying? We because I I can assure you that the the houses that yeah. the investors we have today that have CFAM loans and their payment is set up in um, our software system. Yeah, I mean our we have eight team members at Marathon. They don't yeah. have any. Um, I mean, there, there's no incentive. Uh, you're asking what is the incentive for us to continue collecting the rent? No, no, no. Okay. 
not the what, the, the, what, what you just said about the fact that there's eight agents looking for properties, that's actually the answer that I'm looking for. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know how to word it specifically, but there's eight agents out there looking for tenants. To, so that's no, we, we have 18 members that work full time at, at right. Marathon. We have 15 leasing agents that are right. independent contractors. Cool. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a detail that I wanted because um, it's great for us to be here because we're sitting there. Yeah, but the majority yeah. of the people I'm uh, talking to are actually okay. remote and will ask skeptical questions, rightly so. Yeah, we're, so very, I wanna, we're very transparent too. Yeah, cool. They can see everything on their portable when their house gets <coughs> Yeah, It goes on to mymarathon.com. You will see your house right. advertised. For Please. Please. So that's exactly how I answer that question. Yeah. Yes, and yes, we, it, when a tenant moves out, that house automatically comes back immediately yes. as vacant and goes to 16 national websites in the United States. Yeah. And we have 15 hungry leasing agents that they make zero yeah. if they rent zero houses. So, yeah. you know, they're... I mean, I would, I would also compound that with then, quite frankly, we would go somewhere else, you'd lose all that business. Yeah, I, I know all those answers, but I wanted to see it from your perspective. So, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, we don't have a list of vacant houses that has an asterisk of, hey, this house yeah, is yeah, yeah. alone. No, 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 absolutely. We really need to run this one. <laughs> yeah. no, that's just, a cool. one just a quick one. Um, in terms of an overview of Memphis, mm -hmm. from your perspective, um, just some of the key things that you mentioned in the past, that uh, the property market hasn't spiked yet, hasn't gone up hugely and then fallen hugely. I think you said capital growth on average for the last 30 years has been about 4%. Um, right. And also, it's, it's very much a... It, well, it's, it's a distribution hub of the southwest. There tend to be quite a lot of, uh, I don't know if you call them blue collar workers, blue but workers. Uh, guys earning between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, not very transient. Right. You know, do you mind just kind of give, because is this yeah. valuable? I think it's important to, I mean, we well, can do this over dinner, but. Uh, because of our geographic location, Memphis is actually the distribution hub of the United States. Um, and we have. Um, our airport actually up until two years ago was number one in the world uh, in Hong Kong is now taken over and we almost called it actually this past year uh, but you know our air transportation which is led by FedEx yeah. FedEx has uh, 36,000 employees here um, it's an amazing operation there at Memphis Airport where you came in uh, at 10 o'clock, they have 16,000 people that will clock in, and from 10 o'clock at night until 4 o'clock in the morning, 300 planes will land. Those planes are, uh, you know, deloaded, sorted, reloaded, and 300 planes launch. But it's it's almost gotten to where, I mean, it's almost any time of the day. You're seeing, you're, you know, Sunday, Saturdays, uh, you're seeing FedEx planes just launching and uh, landing. And, um, and then we have trucking, uh, we are number one, Memphis has more trucking companies in the United States than any other metropolitan city. We are one of only uh, three cities uh, to have all five uh, class one railroads that come through Memphis. And uh, uh, one, <laughs> what's that? He sat next to a lady who told she, me about she gave me all this information. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Chicago and New Orleans are the other two cities. Uh, Warren Buffett, as you guys have heard that name, his company about three years ago purchased BNSF, which is one of, the, one of those class one railroads. We have, there has been about a billion dollars invested in our railroad infrastructure in the last three years. And then we have the Mississippi River, which is the largest river in the U.S., um, and so those four modes of transportation, um, you know, we're, we're a distribution hub. Now we have other industries here, um, but to give you an idea, uh, Nike um, uh, has four distribution centers here. They just announced last month they're building a fifth. Um, uh, Disney, everyone's heard of Walt Disney World. Every Disney product in the world comes through Memphis, Tennessee, whether it goes to Euro Disney or Japan, Disney, wherever they're at now. Um, and because of that, I, the best example I've heard is distribution requires very few employees. And so um, if you have a big, like a Nike, and they have an operation that shuts down uh, in, in another market, well, maybe they lay off one person here in Memphis. So it, it, we have very little impact to the economy. And um, um, 
are, like Scott said, uh, uh, our average consumer uh, probably makes thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and we get asked this question: Who who is your tenant? <coughs> I'm going to show you who our tenant is. That B house I, I share with you. Let's just say. Um, if you were a consumer and you went out to the market and you paid ninety thousand dollars for that three bedroom and two bath house, um, today in the United States we have historical low interest rates, and we call it principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So most consumers, in the United States, your mortgage payment or house payment consists of this. And if you are a qualified consumer. Here in Memphis, you can buy that three-bedroom, two-bath house, uh, $90,000, and your payment, principal interest, taxes, insurance, can be about $400 a month. Marathon management, you're going to pay me $1,000 a month. Now, I'm a, I'm a great guy, but why would you want to pay me $1,000 a month when you can pay $400 a month? And the reason for that is we do have... Um, a lot of our consumers, they don't qualify. Uh, Scott mentioned in South Africa, you know, they're you know the, the scrutiny that you go under to, to get a loan, and that was part of our real estate meltdown. And so banks today are very tight and hesitant on lending. It is very difficult for a consumer to qualify. <coughs> if you were one time late on your credit card payment six months ago, you're probably not going to get a house. If you missed a $40 uh, payment on your credit card six months ago, you better find you a house to rent. You're not going to be buying a house in the United States. Um, and so, cons we, our consumers are renting because they are not able to qualify for that. Why would you ever pay me $1,000 a month? And in the city of Memphis, about 60% of our consumers rent. Uh, which is way above the, the national average in the United States. So it, it makes it a, a, a perfect storm because obviously if you have a, a house that you want to rent to collect uh, cash flow, you got to have a renter. And so it, it actually works to our favor. So when we're, when Dave and I are looking at applications for a, applicants, you know, we're ha we know we're going to be, for the most part, we're going to be looking at a consumer that has flaws in their credit. Uh, but we're looking for people. They've been at FedEx for 15 years. They, um, you know, they, they have good income. Uh, they're, you know, they do have good credit references. But yeah, they're going to have probably maybe a bankruptcy that they filed six years ago. Uh, maybe they they lost their house to foreclosure three years ago. Uh, those are actually some of our best tenants. Um, so the question: You said 60% right now is rental. What was it like in the hot? Uh, 40%. 40%. 40%. And uh, so that, you know, gives you a little bit of background about uh, uh, Memphis. Uh, I guess our, you know, a couple other highlights. We have a, a very big, uh, I think a lot of cities do, though. We have a, a large biomedical presence here. Um, we have uh, Smith & Nephew, uh, Wright Medical, and uh, Medtronics. Uh, a couple of the um, big players in that market, and, and a lot of industry is, are they are here just because of FedEx. Mm -hmm. Here in Memphis, I can go. There's one facility near the airport, and I can go up to 11 o'clock tonight, and I can overnight anything in the United States uh, as long as I get it to that facility by 11 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. So there's some sensitive uh, computer uh, parts that are here in Memphis. That are, you know, obviously we're all live and die by our computer. Um, uh, the um, biomedical industry uh, with the artificial body parts and stuff, a lot of times that's a, a sensitive thing that someone needs uh, immediately. So a lot of industry, they are here in Memphis for only one reason, and that's because FedEx is located here. Uh, and, and we're the only city uh, in the United States that you can get critical uh, products delivered the next day uh, at, at such a, you know, a delayed time. Most cities, probably FedEx cut off is, uh, I would imagine, 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night. So, um, yeah, the fleet of FedEx planes that we flew over were yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very impressive. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. 
Just my very last question, Eric, I'm not sure if this comes down from your side, but in terms of that process um, and setting up bank accounts, I don't think it's really relevant to anyone here. So can you and I just chat about that? Yeah, sure. and I, talk. I don't know if anyone else is interested, but then you've all got Wells Fargo bank accounts. Oh, so you, oh, you guys do have Wells Fargo. Yeah, we managed yeah. to get them set up on Tuesday. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know if anyone, unless others are interested, but I'm just like, I can sit with you at, at dinner and understand that. Yeah, going forward, you know, if we have people that are new that you're bringing in and they haven't come over here and set up a bank account, I have that arranged. Okay. So cool. I'll explain it all to you. Cool. Okay. Is there anything else, guys? I, I know everyone uh, is looking a bit tired, but uh, mm -hmm. is there anything else? I mean, obviously, just, just so that I can confirm, Eric and, um, and Hewlett are coming for dinner, so if there's anything you think of yeah. between now and dinner, it's great because you can ask them. But just, just to clarify, you live, from what I understand, is not coming tomorrow out of, like, like Clifford's going to be showing us around, so... Yeah, but I'll, I'll get to be here tomorrow, tomorrow morning when okay. you come in. I'm just running in terms of questions or anything, so yeah. if, you, uh, if there's anything else. Um, cool. Oh, one question. One. Sorry, okay, yeah. And in terms of the, the loan, uh, once you complete the application, how long do you look at? To, to, well, they, they can approve you in 24, 48 hours. Uh, the whole process for the loan takes two weeks, possibly three weeks. Would you mind, Clifton, would you mind just, I think it'd be valuable just running through the process. So yeah. let's just for argument's sake say, I find a house tomorrow I like. Yeah. Okay. Um, all our clients generally have put down the deposit like we normally do, the 20,000. So we can literally <coughs> pull the trigger and say, right. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Sorry, we want to take that property off the market. But what is the process? Just in terms of the process as you see it and the timelines and everything, basically. So you, you submit your application. Okay, so then, we get the application tomorrow and we... Right. And we, we yeah, and CFAM says, okay, great, we're, we, we're ready to move forward. Um, they are more concerned about the house than the buyer. So they're going to do a... They're actually going to hire a home inspector, a professional home inspector, to inspect the house for them as the lender. And they'll go through and do, do a, a detailed inspection of the rehab and the condition of the house so that, you know, as a lender, they're confident that it's, it's, it's uh, in top, top shape. And um, once, that's, once we pass that, then um, money's here. So once, once their money's here, then they'll, they'll put it in front of their review committee. And then that's when they'll determine the LTV or how much they're going to lend. And you don't find that out till, till the very, very end. Um, I would go ahead and do your numbers for 55%. Hopefully they can do better. Um, and at that point you move towards closing. But just so, just, just in terms of the, 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 so it's taken them two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. I in the meantime have now sent my money over, my dollars, my, my $30,000, $40,000 to Neil Hanna's trust account. If that's here then it's going to be more like two weeks. Okay. Now is the, can the property purchase be subject to finance? Absolutely. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think that's critical because, you know, obviously yeah. if you don't give me financing, I can't buy the house. You know, CFAM doesn't give me financing. And can the... Sorry, Matt, go on. The question is, you said early on that it's got nothing to do with the value of the property. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just about the value of the property. It's the condition of the house. He's, he's inspecting the house itself. The, this lender is concerned about... Uh, the income potential of the house, and also that it is in very, very good condition. Because mm. they're, you know, they want, it's, it's a, the, the only recourse for the loan is the house. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. how There's no process. formal appraisal that's done. It's just a, yeah. a, there is a formal inspection done. Mm -hmm. You see, but this, this for me is what I keep reiterating. This is why it's so critical, because I certainly am sitting here because I want to get U.S. passive income. And you know it's quite nice that they are almost giving a level of due diligence. They're not going to lend unless they have satisfied income. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they understand the importance of property management in in the whole model, and that's the reason that they came here and yeah. and rigorously approved marathon management because they know that if it's not managed well, then it's not going to produce income. Cool. And can we um, pre-approve the? LLC and the and the applicant prior to a property purchase to pretend you know to reduce the process. Um, yeah. You yeah. Can have, yeah. You can. So have then all we need to do is then have the inspector go out look at the property and and that would reduce I would imagine the the time it would take for that. You can certainly fill that application out. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much.
All right, next one. So there is not after the three year period. Um, you give me some. Does it seem like it's automatic if you want to be uh, approved, or do you have to go through another process? No. No, they would just uh, renew it um, in the end. Right. And this uh, 1% mm -hmm. before maybe in the future if we want to lock it into seven years. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and who knows at that time? Maybe there's, you know, there's, uh, there's more, 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 more opportunities for international investors. Uh, another, uh, another thing that they're trying with this new, if, if they get the seven, per, seven year money, then uh, uh, that's just person you're going to change that 1% need. Mm -hmm. It'll be, that, that's what you're going to add. Doing. A half a percent to the interest rate. So instead of seven point nine, it will be two point one one percent. It's cash and basis. I need to talk to the corporation. Can I just ask you anything? I want to ask you something. Can you just give us some money to make it out of the transition? Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a lot easier. What do you mean? Is there any interest in the bank or the loan? Yes. There is a prepayment penalty if you pay it in full, and I'm not sure yeah, what the. Uh, it's that this lender does not want you to repay the loan at all. Cool. They are essentially the money is coming from Wall Street. They don't have any. This is the most confident place they can find to put their money. They don't want you to prepay it. They don't want the house. They want you to hold that loan for seven years. The, the prepayment penalty for the first three or five years is but, close. But that's if they get the seven years. Right now it's just three years. And, and to be honest with you, oh, yeah. Rick, who's our contact, was supposed to send us that information today. He knew that you all were coming in. And we don't have that, that information. What is the prepayment penalty? He has told us that once they go to seven years, there is a prepayment penalty in the first four years. Mm -hmm. uh, after four years, it goes away. Uh, so there's no prepayment in the fifth, sixth, and seventh year. Uh, but right now, we don't even have that to offer. All we have is the three years, and he did not email me, and I don't know if he emailed you. He didn't but, know what it was for three years. Right. So we will, we will have to supply that information to you. Mm -hmm. Cool.